A very warm welcome to all of you. Myself, Professor Nagar SS from KJ Somaya College, Kopardgaon. In this lecture, we are going to start the next chapter from the syllabus, that is chapter number three, crystal structure. So, in this first lecture of this chapter three, we are going to study the introduction of this chapter, crystallization and fusion. and the third concept which we are going to study is laws of crystallography so this chapter includes these introductory part the crystallization and fusion concept and laws of crystallography in a introductory part so that we have to study one by one in the first step of this chapter we have to study a simple introduction of this crystal structure so in the introduction we have to look towards the solid state the matter has three physical states solid liquid and gas we know very well these are three states of physical states of matter how they are classified what are the differences between these three physical states of matter the solid state differs from rest to in possessing both definite volume and definite shape as far as this solid state is to be considered it has both definite volume as well as the definite shape so it it get differ easily from rest of the two physical states solid substances classified into two types as far as the solid state of a matter is to be considered it get further classified into two types one is a crystalline solid and second is called as the amorphous solids now this crystalline substances or crystalline solids have a regular shape that is it have a fixed arrangement of constituent particles that may be ions or atoms they have sharp melting points due to the regular shape they show the sharp melting points now what are the examples of this crystalline substances so the first important example is that is a sodium chloride that is a crystal of sodium chloride next one is a sugar naphthalene ice so these are the some common examples of crystalline substances the next type is a amorphous substances show no definite shape and have no sharp melting points no so the simple difference between crystalline and amorphous substances is that crystalline substances have regular shape while this amorphous shows no definite shape so crystalline substances have sharp melting points while these amorphous substances cannot show the sharp melting points they are also known, known as the super cooled liquids these amorphous substances are also known as the super cooled liquids now the simple examples of amorphous substances are glass starch gum and flame suit so these are the common examples of these particular amorphous substances so in the introductory part we just look towards the states of a matter and what is by solid what are the types of the solid and their simple information after studying the different states of a matter and especially after studying the solid state next we have to study what is by the crystallization and fusion so the first crystallization it is a process in which a pure liquid when cooled at a constant pressure get converted into crystal with evolution of the heat so if we have a pure liquid and if we cool that liquid at a constant pressure then what happens gradually this liquid get converted into a crystalline state at that time a heat get evolve so this is a simple process of crystallization now during this process a heat is evolve so that heat is nothing but the heat of crystallization so the amount of heat evolve in conversion of one mole of liquid into one mole of a solid is called as heat of crystallization of a substance so as far as the conversion of a pure liquid into a crystal is to be concerned always a heat can be evolve and that heat is nothing but the heat of crystallization of a substance the next process is a fusion it is a process in which a solid when absorb heat get converted into a liquid so this fusion is nothing but the exactly opposite process to that of the crystallization in this fusion a solid get converted into a liquid is nothing but the amount of heat which must be absorbed to complete the transition of one mole of a solid to one mole of a liquid 
this crystallization and fusion are reverse process just we uh, <coughs> studied here that this crystallization and fusion are nothing but the reverse process the heat of crystallization and heat of fusion of a substance are equal in magnitude but opposite in a sign as far as this heat of crystallization and heat of fusion is to be considered they have the similar magnitude but the sign is opposite now next important point which we are going to study in this lecture is a crystallography this is important point in this chapter crystallography so what is the crystallography it is the branch of science which gives the information about the geometry properties and structure of crystals and crystalline substances so as far as the study of the crystals and crystalline substances are to be considered so that study is in the angle of it their geometry their properties and their structures so that particular branch of a science is called as the crystallography it is based on three fundamental laws this crystallography involves three fundamental laws first is called as the stainer's law of constancy of interfacial angles second one is a huy's law of rationality of indices and third one is a law of symmetry now what are these three laws so that we have to study one by one so the first law of crystallography is stainer's law of constancy of interfacial angles now what is the statement of this law so for a given substance the corresponding face or planes forming the external surface of a crystal always intersects at a definite angle and this angle remains constant no matter how the face develop now as far as the any crystal is to be considered it has a particular face or planes so how that face or planes can be formed so this face or planes have a particular intersection at a definite angle so according to this law no doubt how that face or planes can form the external surface of a crystal but they have a fixed or definite angle so no doubt how this face or planes intersects to form external surface that method does not matter but the main thing is that they always intersects at a definite angle so this is the two structures of this crystal for our concern this law of constants of interfacial angle no doubt their structures are somewhat different but if we take into consideration this intersect intersection of face or planes with this angle of alpha this both these angles that is angle alpha have the equal magnitude so we can say that no doubt how the corresponding face or planes get intersects in order to form the external surface but they always intersects at a fixed or definite angle so this is called as the stainer's law of constancy of interfacial angles now in order to measure these interfacial angles a instrument commonly called as the goniometer is frequently used the second law of crystallography is called as the huy's law of rationality of indices for any crystal if we choose a three coordinate axis so that the faces of crystal will either intersects these axis at definite distance from the origin or be parallel to some of the axis as a comma b comma c such that the ratio of intercepts of any plane in crystal is given by the ratio ma as to nb as to pc this is called as huy's law of rationality of indices or second law of crystallography so according to this law if we want to find out the rationality of indices means if we take a particular crystal and for the studying the structure of that particular crystal if we choose a three coordinate axis system then what happens the faces of a crystal will intersects these faces at a definite distance from the origin or some of the uh, faces they may get parallel to the any one of the axis so by taking into consideration their intercepts ratio along a particular axis from the origin point we get a ratio of intercepts along the different planes in a crystal that ratio is a ma nbs to pc and then this is nothing but the huy's law of rationality of indices now this is a table which gives us information regarding the different values of this m n and p and their intercepts ratio now this coefficients a b c the coefficients of a b c that is nothing but the m n and p are known as the vis indices of a plane in this ratio 
the coefficients of ABC that is nothing but the M, N and P is called as the Wiss indices of a plane. Now, if we take into consideration their possible values, so this table gives the possible values for this M, N and P. Suppose this M has the value of 1, N has the value of again 1 and P has the again values of 1. Then the intercepts ratio becomes 1A, S to 1B, S to 1C. So this type of ratio is nothing but the particular intercepts ratio and this is a Wiss indices of a particular plane. And the second uh, parameter we take here value of m equal to 1, value of n equal to 1 and value of p is equal to infinity. It indicates that the three coordinate axis system have the distance from origin along x axis equal to 1. Along the y axis it has the distance equal to 1 while along the z axis it cannot have the intercepts but it is parallel to the z axis and that's why its intercept ratio is 1a s to 1b s to infinity c. So this is a Wiss indices under these circumstances. So this is a Wiss law of rationality of the indices. The third important, the next important point regarding this Wiss indices is nothing but the how to convert this Wiss to Miller indices or what is the need of conversion of Wiss to Miller indices. For indicating the planes parallel to axis, we have to take infinity many times in the Wiss indices, which is not convenient. So we have to use Miller indices. Uh, we just studied here in the last slide that in case of a Wiss indices at a circum circumstances, some of the axes from the three coordinate axis, they cannot have the intercepts along a particular plane in a given crystal, but they have a parallel nature to one of the axes. So at that situation, we have to take the infinity many times. But this is not a convenient way. So to avoid this, we have to convert this Wiss indices into the Miller indices. Now what do you mean by the Miller indices? Following steps are followed for Wiss to Miller indices conversion. So these are the three simple steps for conversion of Wiss to Miller indices. The step number first is take the reciprocals of Wiss coefficients. Just we have to take the reciprocals of the Wiss coefficients. In the second step, multiply by smallest possible number to express all reciprocals as integers. We have to uh, multiply by the smallest possible number to the above reciprocals in order to get the integers. And in the last step, the obtained indices are called as the Miller indices. By following the step number four, 1 and 2, the indices which is obtained is called as the Miller indices. Now, what are the, what are the different examples for conversion of Wiss to Miller indices? So first example is there, if we have a Wiss notation or Wiss indices as 1a, 1b and 1c. So by using these three different steps, if we follow these three different steps, we get here a Miller indices as 1a as to 1b as to 1c or in the short we can say that 1, 1, 1 is the Miller notation for this particular Wiss notation. The second Wiss notation is 1a as to 1b as to infinity c. So these have the intercepts along x and y axis but it is a parallel to the along z axis so at that situation the miller notation which is obtained by following these two three simple steps the miller indices obtained is a 1 1 0 if we have the third we see notation as 1a as to 1b as to 2 by 3c if we follow these three simple rules the miller notation obtained is 2 2 3 so this is a simple way for the conversion of wish to miller indices the third important law of crystallography is called as the, the law of symmetry. Now, what is the statement for this law? All crystals of same substance possess the same elements of symmetry. Symmetry in crystals may be with respect to a plane, a line or the point of symmetry. So this is a, a law of symmetry. Now, what is meant by plane of symmetry, line of symmetry and center of symmetry? So let us look towards them one by one. First is the plane of symmetry. When an imaginary plane bisects a crystal through its center in such a way that one part is the mirror image of other part, it is called as the plane of symmetry. Means if we pass an imaginary plane from a particular crystal, it's from the center of a particular crystal. If that plane cuts that particular crystal in such a way that one part is exactly the mirror image of the other part, then that plane is said to be have a plane of symmetry. Next is the line of symmetry. When an imaginary line is drawn through the center of a crystal and then rotate the crystal about this line through 360 degree angle in such a way that crystal appears unchanged more than once at that time it is called as the line of symmetry. 
so if we pass imaginary line if we rotate the that particular crystal around about the center of this particular line or axis then if that crystal appears similar more than once then it is to be called as the possessing a line of symmetry this line of symmetry may be called as the axis of symmetry these have the different values it may have two fold axis of symmetry three fold axis of symmetry or four fold axis of symmetry depending upon how much times the similar part of the crystal get appear through the rotation of 360 degree angle the third important type of symmetry is a center of symmetry a crystal is said to have a center of symmetry if every face has another identical face at an equal distance on the opposite side of the center so if we pass a imaginary line from the center of a symmetry so if on either side of this face if a similar or identical face is obtained then that crystal is said to be have an center of symmetry now the fourth one important concept is the elements of symmetry so the total number of planes lines and centers of symmetry of a crystal are called its elements of symmetry so if we collectively take all the number of planes lines and center of symmetry in a given crystal and it is called as the elements of symmetry for example if we take a cubic crystal this cubic crystal has the largest elements of symmetry equal to 23 so if we bifurcate this 23 number it has the nine planes of symmetry 13 axis of symmetry and one center of symmetry so total number is equal to 23 so these are the three figures which gives us an idea regarding the three different types of the symmetry first one is a plane of symmetry a uh, imaginary plane cuts this crystal into the two identical parts so they are called as the mirror image of each other this axis of symmetry is there if we pass this imaginary axis or line through the center of this crystal if we rotate this crystal through 360 degree angle it get appear identical more than once so it has the axis of symmetry about now what is by the center of symmetry so if a imaginary line is passed from the center if on either side of this line if we get the identical face then it is to be said that having the presence of center of symmetry so these are the three important types of a symmetry plane of symmetry axis of symmetry and center of symmetry so in this lecture we focus on the important points in this chapter number 3 crystal structure so we start the third chapter crystal structure in a introductory part we studied what is the uh, different states of a physical states of a matter particularly what is by the solid state after that what is by the crystallization fusion what are the heat of crystallization heat of fusion after that what is by the crystallography what are the three important laws of crystallography that is the stener's law of constancy of interfacial angle weis law of rationality of indices and the last one is the law of symmetry so this is the important points in this uh, first lecture of this chapter number 3 i hope that you understand all these concepts very well so if you like this lecture so please subscribe my youtube channel and press the bell icon in order to get the notification for the upcoming important video lectures on this topic and some another important topics from the rest of the chart rest of the syllabus so with this i stop here thank you thank you so much